Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Deepika Malik. Today's topic of discussion is single cell protein or SCP. Single cell protein refers to the crude, a refined or edible protein extracted from pure microbial cultures or monocultures that is the cultivation of a single type of microorganism as dead or dried cell biomass. They can be used as a protein supplement for both humans or animals. Microorganisms like algae, fungi, yeast and bacteria have very high protein content in their biomass. These microbes can be grown using inexpensive substrates like agricultural waste namely wood shavings, sawdust, corn cobs etc and even human and animal waste. The microorganisms utilize the carbon and nitrogen present in these materials and convert them into high quality proteins which can be used as a supplement in both human and animal feed. It is estimated that about 25% of the world's population currently suffers from hunger and malnutrition. Most of these people live in developing countries. Therefore, SCP deserves a serious consideration for its use as food or feed supplement. Now let us see the types of single cell proteins. Single cell protein broadly refers to the microbial biomass or protein extract used as food or feed additive. Therefore, single cell protein can be broadly classified as food grade or feed grade. If the single cell protein is suitable for human consumption, it is considered as food grade. Single cell protein is regarded as feed grade when it is used as animal feed supplement but not suitable for human consumption. Now let us see the composition of single cell protein. Single cell protein is of high nutritional value for human or animal consumption. It is composed of high protein content about 60 to 80 percent of dry cell weight. It includes fats, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, vitamins, minerals and essential amino acids like lysine and methionine. There are certain advantages of using microorganisms for single cell protein production. Microorganisms grow at a very rapid rate under optimal culture conditions. Some microbes double their mass in less than 30 minutes. The quality and quantity of protein content in microorganisms is better compared to higher plants and animals. A wide range of raw materials which are otherwise wasted can be fruitfully used for single cell protein production. The culture conditions and the fermentation processes are very simple. Microorganisms can be easily handled and subjected to genetic manipulations. Now next slide shows the basic steps of single cell protein production. The production is carried out in the following steps. First is raw materials or substrate selection. Second is selection of suitable strain. Third is fermentation. Fourth is harvesting. Fifth is post harvest treatment. Sixth is single cell protein processing for food. On the right side is a flow chart of the production of single cell protein. In case of semi-solid fermentation, since there is no flowing water in the fermentation medium, therefore there is no need for the filtration step. Now let us first discuss the raw materials or substrates used for the production of single cell proteins. The nature of the raw materials is very crucial for single cell protein production. The cost of the raw materials significantly influences the final cost of single cell proteins. The most commonly used raw materials may be grouped in the following categories. First is the high energy sources which includes alkanes, methane, methanol and ethanol. Second category includes waste products like molasses, whey, animal manures, straw, bagasse. Third category includes wood, example cellulose and lignin which are the components of the wood. Fourth category includes carbon dioxide which is the simplest carbon source. Fifth category includes sewage obtained from industrial wastes. Now we will discuss all these types one by one. The first category includes the production of single cell protein from high energy sources. There are a large number of energy rich carbon compounds or their derivatives which serve as raw materials for single cell protein production. These include alkanes, methanes, methanol and ethanol. Bacteria and yeasts are mostly employed for single cell protein production from high energy sources. Now coming to the alkanes, it is observed that when cells are grown on a medium of alkanes enriched with lipids, the diffusion of alkanes into the cells is enhanced. 
Certain yeasts have been successfully used for producing single cell protein from alkanes. Example, Saccharomyces lipolytica, Candida tropicalis and Candida oleophila. Several oil companies have developed fermentation systems employing petroleum products for large scale manufacture of single cell proteins by yeast. Two types of petroleum products are mainly used for this purpose. First is gas oil or diesel oil containing 10 to 25 percent of alkanes with carbon length of 15 to 30 molecules. These are the long chain alkanes. Short chain alkanes with carbon length in the range of 10 to 17 are isolated from gas oil. The major drawback of alkanes as substrates is the formation of carcinogens along with single cell proteins which are highly harmful. Next is methane. Certain bacteria that can utilize methane for single cell protein production have been identified. Example, Methylococcus capsulatus, Methylomonas methanica and Methylovibrio soengi. The bacterial enzyme methane oxygenase oxidizes methane to methanol which can be converted to formaldehyde and then to formic acid. Methanol is a good substrate for producing single cell protein. Methanol as a carbon source for single cell protein has several advantages over alkanes and methane. Methanol is easily soluble in aqueous phase at all concentrations and no residue of it remains in the harvested biomass. Technically, methanol can be easily handled. The source for methanol are natural gas, coal, oil and methane. Many species of bacteria like Methylobacter, Arthrobacter, Bacillus, Pseudomonas and Vibrio. Yeasts like Candida boydini, Hansenulia polymorpha and Torulopsis glabrata and fungi like Trichoderma lignorum and Gliocladium deliquescens are capable of producing single cell protein from methanol. Bacteria are mostly preferred because they require simple fermentation conditions, grow rapidly and possess high content of protein. Ethanol is good substrate for the production of single cell protein for human consumption that is a feed grade single cell protein. However, this process as such is not economically feasible. However, several factors, local raw materials, innovative fermentation technology, political decisions and foreign trade balances influence production of single cell protein. It may not be surprising if large scale production of single cell protein commences on one day from ethanol for a variety of reasons. Next category of raw materials for the single cell protein production after high energy sources is its production from wastes. There are several materials that serve no useful purpose and they are collectively referred to as waste, example molasses, whey, animal manure, straw and bagasse. These waste products formed in various industries and other biological processes largely contribute to environmental pollution. There are several advantages of utilizing waste for the production of single cell protein. These includes the conversion of low cost organic waste to useful products and reduction in environmental pollution. Examples Saccharomyces cerevisiae is used for molasses and Cluiviromyces fragile for cheese whey. Next category includes the production of single cell protein from wood. The natural waste wood sources containing cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin are attractive natural sources for the production of single cell protein. It is however essential to break down these cellulosic compounds into fermentable sugars. For this purpose, extracellular cellulases can be used. Certain bacteria like Cellomonas and fungi like Trichoderma and Penicillium species are good sources for cellulosis. The cellulosic material can be directly used for biomass production. The resultant single cell protein is used as animal feed. Next category includes production of single cell protein from carbon dioxide. Certain algae grown in open ponds require only carbon dioxide as the carbon source. In the presence of light, they can effectively carry out photosynthesis and produce single cell protein. The examples of these algae are Chlorella species, Syndesmus species and Spirulina species. Chlorella is used as a protein and vitamin supplement for enriching ice creams, breads and yogurt in some countries. 
The resultant algae biomass can be harvested, dried and powdered. Algae single cell protein are very useful as animal supplements. Now let us see nutritive value of spirulina single cell protein. Traditionally, spirulina species have been eaten by people in some parts of Africa and Mexico. Single cell protein of spirulina is of high nutritive value as it contains 65% of protein, 20% of carbohydrate, 4% of fat, 3% fiber, 5% chlorophyll and 3% ash. Spirulina is a good source of protein for human consumption. The last category of raw materials for the production of SCP is sewage. Domestic sewage is normally used for large-scale production of methane, which in turn may be utilized for the production of single-cell protein. The sewage obtained from industrial waste in cellulose processing, starch production and food processing can be utilized for the production of single-cell protein. The organism Candida utilis is used to produce single-cell protein by using effluent formed during the course of paper manufacture. Only microorganisms namely Candida tropicalis, Pacillomyces veroiti are employed to use sulphite waste liquor for the production of single cell protein. Now after the selection of raw materials, second is the selection of microorganisms. Several microorganisms like bacteria, yeast, fungi, algae and actinomycetes utilizing a wide range of substrates are used for the production of single cell proteins. The selection of microorganisms for single cell protein production is based on several criteria. These include their nutritive value, non-pathogenic nature, production cost, raw materials used and growth pattern. It is very critical step as the quality of protein depends totally on the microbe that is used for the production. Thus, careful selection of the strain should be done. Care should be taken that the selected strain should not produce any toxic or undesirable effects in the consumer. The next slide shows you a table giving the average composition of the main microorganisms in percentage dry weight. Fungi contains protein in the concentration of 30 to 45 percent. Algae contains 40 to 60 percent of protein. Yeast contains 45 to 55 percent protein. And bacteria contains 50 to 65 percent of protein. Fungi contains 2 to 8 percent of fat. Algae contains 7 to 20 percent. Yeast have 2 to 6 percent of fat. And bacteria have 1.5 to 3 percent of fat. Fungi have 9 to 14 percent of ash content, algae have 8 to 10 percent, yeast have 5 to 9.5 percent and bacteria have 3 to 7 percent. Fungi have 7 to 10 percent of nucleic acids, algae have 3 to 8 percent, yeast have 6 to 12 percent and bacteria have 8 to 12 percent. Now let us discuss all these types of microorganisms one by one. First are the fungi and yeasts. Filamentous fungi used for single cell protein production are Catonium celluticum, Fusarium graminearium, Pacillomyces varioti, Aspergillus fumigatus, Aspergillus niger, and Rhizopus cyclopean, which grows on cellulose waste, starch, and sulfite waste liquor and contain about 50 to 55 percent protein. Single cell protein is produced from yeasts, namely Candida utilis. Candida lipolytica, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and Candida tropicalis. Torula yeast as a food is obtained through fermentation using molasses as substrate and it has high protein to carbohydrate ratio than forages. Forages are plant materials eaten by grazing livestock. It is rich in lysine but poor in methionine and cysteine. Saccharomyces consists of high protein with good balance of amino acids and rich in B-complex vitamins. It is more suitable as poultry feed. Strict aseptic conditions are required when using yeast as a single cell protein production. There are certain disadvantages also of using fungi and yeast. That is they have high nucleic acid content. Slow growth is observed in fungi vis a vis that is in relation to yeast and bacteria. Contamination risk is high. Mycotoxins are also produced. Next type of microorganisms that can be used for the production of single cell proteins are bacteria. They have more than 80% protein but are poor in sulfur containing amino acids. 
Brevi bacterium uses hydrocarbons, while methylophilus methylotrophus uses methanol as a substrate. The disadvantages of using bacteria are that it has high nucleic acid content. Recovering the cells is a bit problematic. Endotoxin production should be carefully tested. Another important category of microorganisms includes algae. Chlorella, Syndesmus acutus, and Spirulina maxima are grown for single cell protein. These have about 60% protein with good amino acid composition but less in sulfur containing amino acids. Chlorella and Spirulina are used for commercial scale production in Taiwan, Thailand, Japan, Israel, Mexico, and USA. It is spray dried and sold as pills and powders. There are certain disadvantages also. As they are rich in chlorophyll, it is not advised for human consumption except spirulina. It has low density that is 1 to 2 grams dry weight per liter of substrate. There is a lot of risk of contamination during growth of algae for single cell protein production. Now next step is the fermentation. It can be carried out in the fermenter which is equipped with aerator, thermostat for maintaining temperature, pH etc. Or in the trenches or ponds. Microbes are cultured in fed batch culture. Engineers have developed deep lift fermenter and air lift fermenter for this. As we already know, in fed batch culture, there are one or more nutrients that are fed to the bioreactor during cultivation and the products remain in the bioreactor until the end of the run. After fermentation, next step is the harvesting. When the colonies of microbes are fully developed, they are then harvested. The bulk of cells are removed from the fermenter by decantation. After harvesting is the post-harvesting treatment, where the cells are subjected to a variety of processes. Post-harvesting treatments include steps like separation, washing, drying, etc. For separation, single cell protein cell organisms like yeast and bacteria are normally recovered by centrifugation, flocculation and flotation whereas filamentous organisms like fungi are recovered by filtration. After that, washing is done of the separated biomass. And then final drying is given after removal of maximum amount of water. There is another important step in the production of single cell protein that is its processing. Depending on the substrate material and intended food and feed applications, various processing steps are required prior to formulation of the final single cell protein product. Two main processing steps include cell wall degradation and nucleic acid removal. Now let us have a look on both these methods one by one. Some single cell proteins are used as whole cell preparations while in others the cell wall may be broken down to make the protein more accessible. Various methods have been used to disrupt the cell wall. Mechanical methods include crushing, crumbling, grinding, pressure homogenization, etc. Chemical methods include treatment with hydrolytic enzymes both endogenous or exogenous or treatment with salts like sodium chloride. Physical methods include freeze-thaw, osmotic shock, heating and drying. Now second processing method is the removal of nucleic acids. Although algae generally have low nucleic acid content, the rapidly proliferating bacterial and fungal species have high nucleic acid RNA content. When single cell protein is produced for human consumption, high nucleic acid content is a problem because ingestion of purine compounds derived from RNA breakdown increases uric acid concentrations in plasma which can cause gout or kidney stones. Endogenous RNA degrading enzymes that is ribonucleases can be exploited in degradation of RNA. Ribonucleases can also be added to the process. Degraded RNA components diffuse out of the cells, but biomass loss of 35 to 38 percent also occurs. Treatment at 65 degrees Celsius in pH ranging from 7.5 to 8.5 to activate endogenous ribonuclease also reduce the RNA content to less than 2 percent, while the protein content could stay at 50 percent. Now apart from microorganisms, macroorganisms like mushrooms can also be used for the production of single cell proteins. Mushrooms are fungi belonging to the class Basidiomycetes containing Agaricus species, Auricularia species and Trimella species and Escomycetes containing Morshella species and Tuber species. 
Majority of edible mushrooms are the species of Basidiomyces. It is estimated that there are around 4000 species of Basidiomyces. Of these, only 200 are edible and a dozen of them are cultivated on large scale. The cultivation of edible mushrooms is one of the rare examples of a microbial culture wherein the cultivated macroscopic organism itself is directly used as human food. Mushroom growing is one of the fastest developing biotechnological industries world over. Further, growth of mushroom industry is expected for the production of enzymes and pharmaceutical compounds including anti-tumor agents and antibiotics. The given table shows some examples of mushroom species with their common names and the substrates on which they grow. Agaricus bisporus, also known as button mushroom, grows on straw and compost. Lentinula edodes, also known as oak and shitake mushroom, grows on sawdust and rice bran. Pleurotus ostreatus, also known as oyster mushroom, grows on straw, sawdust and paper. Volvirelia volvatia, also known as Chinese mushroom, grows on straw cotton. Auricularia grow on sawdust and rice bran. Now let us see the nutritive value of edible mushrooms. Some people regard edible mushrooms as vegetable meat. Mushrooms contain 80 to 90 percent water depending on the growth conditions like temperature and humidity. Edible mushrooms are rich sources of proteins containing 35 to 45 percent of dry weight. However, all these proteins are not easily digestible by humans. Mushrooms also contain fats and free fatty acids like 7 to 10 percent, carbohydrates 5 to 15 percent and minerals in good concentration. Certain undesirable substances may also be present in edible mushrooms, example cadmium or chromium. There are certain advantages of edible mushroom biotechnology. Mushrooms can be produced by utilizing cheap and often waste substrates from industrial and wood wastes. They are of high nutritive value being rich in proteins, vitamins and minerals. Many delicious recipes can be prepared from mushrooms. Due to low carbohydrate content, consumption of mushrooms is advocated to diabetic patients. The next slide shows the steps involved in the production of edible mushrooms. Mushroom production is basically a fermentation process. This is mostly carried out by solid state fermentation. A wide range of substrates depending on the organism can be used like straw, sawdust, compost, wooden logs, etc. The flowchart gives an overview of edible mushroom production. The compost with desired formulation is prepared and sterilized. Compost is organic matter that has been decomposed in a process called composting. It is spread into trays which are then transferred to production room and inoculated with spawn. Spawn is the term used for the mushroom inoculum containing spores and small pieces of rooting body. After inoculation, that is spawning, the culture is maintained at optimal growth conditions. The trays are regularly watered to maintain 70 to 80 percent humidity. The ideal temperature is about 15 degrees Celsius and pH about 7. It takes about 7 to 10 days for each crop of mushroom production. The mushrooms can be harvested and marketed. Mushrooms have a very short life of 8 to 12 hours unless stored at low temperature of 2 to 5 degrees Celsius. Therefore, they should be immediately consumed, stored or canned. Now, in spite of all these advantages, there are certain limitations of using single cell protein. The nucleic acid content of microbial biomass is very high. Like in algae, it is 3 to 8 percent, in bacteria, it is 8 to 12 percent, and in yeast, it is 6 to 12 percent. This is highly hazardous since humans have a limited capacity to degrade nucleic acids. The presence of carcinogenic and other toxic substances is often observed in association with single cell protein. These include the hydrocarbons, heavy metals, mycotoxins and some contaminants. The nature and production of these compounds depend on the raw materials and the type of organism used. There is a possibility of contamination of pathogenic microorganisms in the single cell protein. The digestion of microbial cells is rather slow. This is frequently associated with ingestion and allergic reactions in individuals. Food grade production of single cell protein is more expensive 
than some other sources of proteins example soy meal of course this mainly depends on the cost of raw materials in general single cell protein for human consumption is 10 times more expensive than single cell protein for animal feed Single cell proteins can be employed for many applications since it provides instant energy it is extremely good for healthy eyes and skin it provides the best protein supplemented food for undernourished children it serves as a good source of vitamins amino acids minerals crude fibers etc single cell proteins are also used in therapeutic and natural medicines for controlling obesity lowers blood sugar level in diabetic patient it reduces body weight cholesterol and stress it prevents accumulation of cholesterol in the body single cell proteins are used in cosmetics product for maintaining healthy hair production of different herbal beauty products like bio lipsticks herbal face creams etc They are also used in poultry as it serves as an excellent and convenient source of proteins and other nutrients. It is widely used for feeding cattle, birds, fishes, etc. Now let us have a quick review on the production of single cell protein. First is the selection of raw materials or substrates which can be high energy sources, waste products, wood, carbon dioxide or sewage materials. After that a suitable microorganism is selected which may be fungi yeast bacteria or algae after that fermentation is carried out mainly fed batch fermentation is preferable for the production of single cell protein after the fermentation is complete the next step is harvesting which involves the decantation process next step includes the post harvesting treatment which includes separation washing and drying of the microbial biomass Next step is the processing of single cell proteins which includes cell wall degradation by mechanical chemical or physical methods and second is the removal of nucleic acid by the use of enzymes such as ribonucleases and finally after all these steps the single cell protein is ready to be packaged and to be sold with this we wind up the topic for industrial production of single cell proteins for any doubts and queries you can contact me through the given email id Thank you